In this video series, we're looking at databases in Delphi and we're looking at how we can interact with the database or the tables in a database from the Delphi environment. How do we extract data? In other words, going through all the, the records in a database, in a, in a table, and try to find the average of a particular field, something like along those lines. So before we do that, we need to know well, how do we interact with the database. Now we are going, we've in our previous videos we've done a connection to a database, and we've had this component called the ADO table component, and that is what we use whenever we are trying to manipulate or do things to the table. Um, so some of the methods that we're going to need to know before we can start interacting um, with the data is the first one is ironically enough the first it's called first and basically in a table we have this little pointer that points to which record we are currently working with um, and that pointer can move around in the different tables as we go to different records so if we want to move the pointer to the very first record starting at the very beginning then we're going to say we're going to use the first method so if our ADO table is called tblcd then you go tblcd.first you call it just like that um, another method that we need if we want to move to an, the next record, so from if you go to the first, then you want to go to the second, then you would call the next record, which will go to the next one, and you can call that multiple times, and that basically moves the pointer to the next record. So wherever that pointer is, that is the record you are dealing with. So if you access information, it'll be from that particular record. Um, maybe you want to keep going next until we when get to the end of the file. How do we know when the end of the file is? Well, there is an EOF, which stands for end of file and that just that's a boolean function um, that returns a true if the pointer is at the end of the database table and will return a false if it's not so you can use that in an if statement or in a while loop um, so you can basically find out if you are at the end of the table or not if you don't know how many records there are um, but there is a way to find out how many records there are in, in a, a table by using the record count so that returns it uh, returns an integer, it tells you how many values there are, in, how many records there are basically in that table. So you would store that in a particular variable ideally. So there you go. So that's tblcd.recordCount. Now those are the main ones we're going to be using. Um, there are others um, and some of them are like very similar to what we've got here. So for example, there is the dot last, which moves the pointer to the very last record. Um, and there's also a dot prior, which is the opposite of the next, which moves it to the previous record. So next moves it up one, uh, prior moves it back one basically. So those are other options available to you if you need to use it. So the basic structure when you want to go through all the records in a database, the basic steps are if your database is connected, that's fine. Then you so in this case we're going to be using the TBLCD for our example. But we're going to first step is always we're going to start at the very beginning. So that's the first step. So TBLCD dot first. So we put the pointer at the very stop, start of the table. Then we're going to go and do something until we reach the end of the table. So we're going to loop while not at the end of the file, or end of the, in this case, end of the table, keep doing something. And we're going to keep working. So we'll be still working with the first record, but then we'll move to the next and next. And for us to move to the next inside the while loop, we will need to say, hey, once we finished working with the first record, we need to move to the next record. And if there's more records after that, we will not be at the end of the file. So it will move, it'll do it again and go to the next and so on. It'll keep doing this loop. So whenever you're working through a database table, remember these three steps. Start at the first one, while not at the end of the file, do. And then inside the while loop, we're going to, right at the end, once we've done what we needed to do, you move to the next record. And you keep doing that until you've completed what you need to do. That's great. Now, some of you might have done text file handling. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning text file handling because traversing a database is actually very similar to traversing a text file. So if you watch our videos on text file handling, then you'll see there's almost like a link here. So if you remember in traversing a text file, there was a thing called assigned file. And that was basically making the text file variable connect to the actual text file. Now we don't need to do that with the database because that was already done using the ADO connection and the connection strings. So that part's already done, so let's ignore the assign file. But after the assign file, there was a reset the text file. And that was basically to put the pointer at the top of the text file. Does that sound familiar to something that we've done yet yeah, in, in database? Yes, that's the same as tblcd.first. That's going to the first record. So those two are very similar in what they accomplish for when you're going through a text file or a database. And then in a text file, we would go and carry on going until we reach the end of the text file. 
which is exactly what we're going to be doing with the with the database. We're going to while not end of file, while not end of file. Are you seeing the connection here? They are so similar. And then we would have our begins and ends because we're doing lots of things inside the, the while loop and we would do the same for the database. The difference is, slight difference is this part where we would use a read line in a text file that would basically access the line that we need or the value or the, the, the line of text in the text file and move the pointer to the next line and then you would work with S line. Um, so in a database that's slightly different because we're already at the line that we, we have access to everything we need. We, we need to finish working with that record and only once we are finished working with the record then we move to the next. So that's why we still go to the next record it's just we do this at the end. Okay so that's the basic gist of how we're going to interact with the database. Now to access the actual values in a record. Now the pointer will be at each and every record. How do I go and fetch a particular value from a particular field? Well, we've got this, the ADO tables, TBLCD. To access a particular field, you will then put square brackets. And then inside the square brackets, in quotes, you will put the name of the field that you want to access. It must be spelled exactly like it is in the database. So that's why it's a good idea to not put spaces in your database um, field names because yeah you don't want to put space either but so let's keep it let's keep it one word or use underscores if you need to but yeah you can see we are accessing the artist value wherever the pointer is so if we say dot first and then this we would be accessing the artist of the first record but what are we going to do with this? Well, we can store this in somewhere. Like, for example, we could maybe we could store it in a variable or use an if statement to compare it. We can do all those types of things. Now, so as you can see, you can see the artist value, whatever, wherever the record is at that moment, the artist value at that particular point will be stored into sart variable. If I'd went to the replacement value rec, uh, field, so if I use the replacement value rec, uh, field, this would be a little bit of a problem because each field has a different data type. Now the artist was a string, so we can put that into a string variable. But this replacement value, although it looks exactly the same, except for it's a different field, that field is an integer in our database. So you can't store it into a string. So you would then need to interact with this particular one as an integer. In other words, store it into an integer variable. So just remember, you need to be aware of what the data type of each field is, because when you are interacting with it, you need to interact with it with, with what it is. If it's a string, interact with it as if it was a string. And if it's a um, if it was text, you can do that. If it's a number field, you need to interact with it as if it was a number. So just remember that when you're interacting with the database. So yeah, we've got a, a database, a database connected to the CD table, and we've got a button here. Um, all our details are in the dmcd underscore u. And we are going to interact with tblcd. So I'm going to try to find the average of all the replacement values. By just clicking on this button so what we're going to do you can see i've got a a real variable there which we can use and i've got a, a, an average variable and we need to use with dmcd if you remember when we're interacting with a database um, you need to go the data module and then we can say tblcd dot first things like that if i don't have the dmcd then i would have to go dmcd dot dblcd dot first you have to write that every single time so that's what this width is so that means it's going to put that in front of all the tblcds for me so i don't have to type it in manually so the first step we said was tblcd dot first the second step was while not tblcd dot end of file and then we're going to have a begin and an end and this is the end of my while loop and then at the bottom of the while loop, we're going to say tblcd.next. So whenever you're going through a database table, those are your three steps. You just type them in like that. Now, what do we want to do? We want to add up all the values in the, the replacement value field because we want to work out the average replacement value. So you need to add them all up and divide by how many there are. So I've got a sum variable. We should always initialize our sum variable to zero because we're going to keep adding to it. And then inside over here, this is the part over here. I'm just going to do this quickly so we can see. Whatever we do here is the code that will be done for the first record. And you just believe that the loop will then continue that for every other record after that. So we go to the first record, 
do what you need to do with the first record, then go to the next. And it's going to keep doing this for every single record. So the code here is what you would do as if you were working with just one record. And what do I want to do with each record? I want to go take the sum variable, take whatever's in the sum variable and add the replacement value. Now, how do I access the replacement value of the first record? It's TBLCD square brackets. You remember inside the square brackets in a quote, we put the name of the field spelt exactly like it is in the database. So replacement value, is that how it's spelt? Repla it looks like it's correct, so there we go. So get the replacement value, which is a number field. You don't need to convert it, add it to sum and make that the new sum. So that's gonna do it for the first record, then we're gonna move to the next, do it for the second, and it'll keep doing it for every other record after that. So after this code has executed, once the loop is done, it will have our sum will be the total of all these values together. And to find the average of that, that's easy. The average would be whatever the uh, average variable is equal to whatever the sum is divided by how many records there are. And we have a TBLC dot record count, which tells us how many values there are in the table. So take the total of all the replacement values and divide it by how many records there are in total, and that will be the average. And then we can show that in some sort of show message. Show message. Average is, I'm gonna put that in quotes. Average is plus float to string f, our average if it fixed, 8,2. Where's my 8? There's my 8. Okay. So go through every single record, start at the first, add the first record, go to the next, add the second record until we get to the end of the tech, end of the database table. Then take that total, divide it by how many records there are, that's the average. Just, just go test to see if it works. And you should see this this little black arrow next to the the each record. That's the pointer that we're referring to. So when we run it, you'll see that little black arrow over there. It's at the first record already. So when I click, click find average, it, you'll see it move through all the records. There we go. It went through all the records and found the average is 1040.04. Okay. So that's the average of everyone. But what happens if I want to find the average of a particular genre? Maybe I want to find only the particular genre. If I want to do that, that's a more specific one. So I need to get the value from that edit box. So... What is that edit box called? EDT input. So let's say we're going to get the genre from, from that edit box. Here's genre is equal to EDT input dot text. So we're going to type in what maybe we want all the rock CD. So then it's exactly the same. But the but in this case we only want to add up the replacement values if the record that we are at is a rock CD or a CD that matches that genre. So we need to have an if statement here. So if, how do I access the genre in the database table? TBL CD square bracket, what field is it called? Genre. So that's a string field. If that is the same as the genre that we've been inputted, then we want to sum the replacement value. Okay, so there we go. But the problem with this is I can't divide it by record count. I can't sum just the rock CDs, for example, and then divide it by how many total CDs there are in total. I need to divide it by how many rock CDs there are. So I need to sum the rock CDs and count them. And I, don't, I can't use record count in that case. So in that case, I actually need a count variable. So let's make a count variable. Where's I make it nice and pretty? And then we need to initialize it. And then whenever we find a rock CD, I'm saying the word rock, that's if they typed in the word rock. If wherever they find a rock CD, we're gonna increase our count so that we know that we found another CD that's rock. And instead of dividing it by record count, in this case, we're gonna divide by count. So in this case, we type in, for example, the rock. So I type in rock and it will only find the average of the rock CDs. And if I type in pop, it will only find the average of the pop CDs and so on. So that's how that one works. That's a very specific average. 
So to recap, start at the first record, while not end of the database table, and then do what you need to do, and then at the end you go tblcd.next. For more videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, click on the like, we'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.